Well, good morning, guys. We're bringing you back to the log cabin for episode 95 of the cabin build. It's bringing you guys up to speed. The last week, we played around with wire meshing. We added wire mesh to the spaces between every single log in order to accept our chinking, which is coming next. I've got a nice pile of sand and I'm gonna mix it with some cement or some Portland and I'm gonna make a somewhat of a slurry. I'm gonna pack it in the crack and that's gonna be the best thing ever, right? You gotta film that sort of thing. It's gonna be awesome. While well, you guys are waiting for this video to come out, I cut another strips of mesh because we got still gotta finish off the inside of the cabin with the meshing and then we can get right on buttering this guy up like a big cake. It's never good when you hear one of those helicopters. Do we see it? No. Come rescue me from chinking! I don't think anybody wants to help chink. This is not a job that's gonna be awesome or fun, but I'm gonna try to make it as entertaining as possible. Again, I don't know how to do that. We're gonna try. We're gonna try very hard to make this interesting. I've got uh, a couple of helpers coming. I think my brother's coming. I think Dawn's coming. And uh, we're just gonna get it done. Cause you know what? This is something that it's just like a band-aid. You just gotta rip it off and uh, get her done. Get the outside done, get the inside done. And then we can move on. It's kind of like one of those things in life where you just gotta do it regardless if it's fun or not. You know, for the greater good. Cause it's gone on quite frankly, too long. So as my intro. Didn't spill a drop. That was, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, that, that's lots where that came from. <clears throat> we managed to get all our supplies. By supplies, I mean we need water, we need sand, and we need Portland. Now the mixture, it's gonna be a little bit of a trial and error, but I'm planning on doing one part Portland, three part sand. And I'm hoping that gives me enough flexibility in order to have my chicken not fall apart. You want it to stick, you want it to be hard, but you also want it to be soft and malleable. So we're gonna give it a whirl, and uh, worst case scenario, we uh, do it all over again. Look at those gloves. Those are, those are the special ones we got from Princess Auto. They're only three bucks. These are beautiful. Nice right. and soft. Aren't they nice and soft? Don't care for the... Uh, oops, there we go. We don't, we, don't, we don't need to... There. Yeah, no, they are very soft and supple and... We don't got it. They're not. They're. They're just. They're work gloves. But yeah. it's a good pair of work gloves, right? Yeah. They're doesn't matter. Like doesn't matter where they're from. Calf skin or something. They're very nice. It's always good to have a good pair of work gloves. It's kind of like it's getting like a new pair of shoes for your hands. Well, I hope you enjoy those. I got more. I got when you wear those guys out. I got more. I stocked up. Turns out they were on sale for like less than half price. So I grabbed a whole pile of them because I'm still switching from winter gloves. So I got the. I've got the fuzziness and the, your hands start to sweat. Those are like summer gloves, so they work really well. Favorite thing to do in the world? Uh, it's not my favorite, but uh, like all things, it has to be done. So we'll get it done and then we'll move on to the next step. How are those gloves treating you? These are beautiful. They, they have hardly, cool. they have, the, uh, the wire doesn't catch in them as bad as I thought they might. And uh, they're protecting my hands, so they're... Uh, a godsend. They haven't Thank you very much. You haven't, uh, you haven't got any blood yet. No, not yet, which is unusual for myself. See mine? Uh, I already drew blood this morning. Yeah. And I, was, <laughs> I wasn't having no gloves on, I was cutting the mesh. So, anyways, this is our, this is our progress. So you can see where we nailed it, tops and bottoms. And this is when it's not nailed. It's just kind of, Dawn's tucking it in place. And then I go back around and nail it with the nail gun. And then there won't be any mosquitoes, Dawn. That's exciting. No mosquitoes in here. That's right. <laughs> that is true. Those are the mosquitoes outside. So once we get once we get all the concrete in here, we won't uh, we won't have any mosquito problems. And the uh, the weather has changed yet again because uh, we've got uh, it's like a cold snap that happened. It got down to like seven degrees overnight. Everything maybe the mosquitoes just packed up and went souther, more south. Anyways, we're gonna get some nailing done. It's loud. I got my earmuffs on because it's just it's just a loud and obnoxious banging. So once that's done, we can start our concrete. The current status of the inside of the cabin is that we've got most of the wire mesh in, the wire lath. We're just working on the bottoms and the tops. We ran out of uh, mesh 
last week, so we had to pick up some more. Set it in place. I don't know if you guys can see that. You set it in the cracks, and then you add nails to the tops and the bottoms in order to hold it in place. I'm just working on this little section here, getting the bark off. There's a little bit of stray bark that needs to be removed because you don't want bark uh, between the mesh and the log and the cement because the, the bark will eventually come off and moisture gets trapped underneath. So we just got to remove that and uh, Bob's your uncle. Away we go. your ham sandwich. No, oh, I tried. All right, so we've decided on our specific recipe, I've got in hand the multiple different kinds of recipes there are for chinking. And the one we went with is one part Portland cement, three parts coarse sand, because we happen to have lots of coarse sand and we have a very limited amount of Portland. The other, there's other options like one part lime, two parts Portland cement, three parts masonry sand. We don't have any lime. Uh, four parts clay, we have clay. Two parts wood ash, that'd be lots of wood ash. We have lots of that. One part salt, that's weird. I don't know why you put salt in it. Six parts sand, two part Portland cement, one part lime. We're gonna go with the one part Portland, three parts sand. sand. And we're gonna, go, we're gonna go with that and uh, see how it works. And um, if it doesn't work, like I said, we can always redo this. It wouldn't take us that long. We've got our mesh all done. So Don's gonna start making our, uh, you're gonna make some porridge. So, Three parts. Three parts sand, sand, one part Portland. start on the back because you can't see the back that well so you always want to start on the side that you see the least amount of so I've never done this before it's gonna be a slight learning curve I've got my drywall hawk with my I don't know a little trowel and we're gonna to to force it in the cracks and see what happens I've already learned something I am right-handed I'm gonna start on the other side After the mortar is set up a little bit where it's kind of, you don't get your fingerprint in it, you can use a little brush. This is, looks like a giant toothbrush. Don brought this actually. Is this your toothbrush? No, it's my brush for the, uh, the back. Oh, it's your back brush. Okay. So anyways. so usually once it's set up, you can just kind of tool it like that. And you're just kind of smoothing it out, getting rid of the imperfections and then the crumbs will just 
fall off and it leaves you a nice smooth surface. I've never done a log cabin, but this is how I do parging. Get a similar effect with your hand. As long as you're wearing rubber gloves. So you don't wear your fingertips off. Doesn't that look nice? I'm pretty impressed with that. I'm, I'm impressed that we we got it looking this good. Look how good, good that looks. We're at the end of the day and we've accomplished quite a bit. We've managed to get uh, about one side done. It's taken us about two and a half hours. We started slightly after lunch after we got all our wire mesh done. Uh, we've used roughly a bag Actually half a bag, half a bag of Portland cement and a whole bunch of sand. But the sand is the cheap part. The Portland is the expensive part. It never used to be the expensive part. I think Portland's now $15 a bag. So uh, that's the expensive part. So we're at $7 worth of material. We're gonna have to let it set up a little bit longer and then tool it out to get a nice smooth finish on our chinking. But uh, if we get too far today, because it's gonna start cooling off at night, it, it won't set up until like, you know, past my bedtime <laughs> and I, that's the last thing I want to do is come out here and and it's smooth it out but it's important to smooth it out otherwise it'll look ragged it's always good to sleep on a new technique and, it, and the next time when you wake up in the morning and you start again it's always easier to do after a good night's sleep your brain thinks about it while you're sleeping makes you better at doing something you just learned you're gonna be dreaming about this tonight uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Come on. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's like playing in the sandbox, right? It's, it's a little more dangerous. A few more cuts, scrapes, but... It's caustic and it'll peel your skin off, but... That's right, yeah. But it's kind of just like peel it playing in the sandbox. There's a lot less cat poop. Welcome to day two of the chinking process. We're back. We've had an overnight to let it dry. And it seems to work really, really well. It's nice and hard. It's it's stuck on both sides. It's nice and feathered out. So it's nice and smooth. I think I think this is a success if everything can go like just like this. Finding new and interesting ways of giving myself blisters in the forest. What do you think, Don? Did you get any blisters last night? No. Nope. Because you got the gloves. Yeah, gloves. that's right. I got I got pre-existing uh, blisters from using the snips to cut the mesh. So um, yeah, my fingers are a little sore today. But uh, anyways, we're going to start, we're going to start uh, chinking this back wall and give you an update and see how long it takes. Start the stopwatch. Start the stopwatch. We'll see how long this takes. This has got no windows, no obstructions, no doors in the way. So it should go relatively quick. So what's your technique there? Well, I kind of roll it up in a ball and just uh, Look at that. heave it in. <laughs> just gets uh, good penetration and um, I'm going to have to come back because this is a little... Uh, it's a little wet right now, and so okay. it's, uh, but once it hardens up, I'll add a bit more. So it's all about good penetration. It's all about, that's, that's the secret. And just like that, through the magic of YouTube, this wall has been mortared or chinked. Chinked is the technical term. We're going to move on to the third wall. We've got two walls left, which is the other side. Do the same thing again, but this time you guys can watch. This is the time consuming part is the corners to get around every little log and the uh, you just scan it, skate across the sides with your pointing trowel sort of thing and then you kind of smooth it out once it's half dry. So there's no real, I guess there's kind of a special technique. You work it back and forth and uh, it seems to work its way into the mesh and then locks in so it never comes out again. Well, hopefully it never comes out again. That's the plan. Forever. This is the forever version of the chinking process. Or at least I'm told anyways. We're gonna we're gonna test that theory out. It's not bad. We've gone through one bag of Portland, which isn't terrible. So 15 bucks so far, and that's given us two sides, so not bad. Well guys, that's a pretty busy day of work. We've got the front all chinked up. We've gotta put uh, we gotta tool it still, so it's gotta set up. So I'm gonna be here for a little while. It's gotta it's gotta dry a little bit so you can actually texture or lack of texture or uniform texture. It's gonna be a fine piece of real estate when it's done. I didn't uh, I didn't think it was gonna quite look like this, but I'm pleased I'm pleased with it's how it's how it's turning out so far. Hey Don, what do you think? I think it's I like it. I think it looks good. It's really coming together. Who knew? Who knew it looked so cool at the end? I had my doubts, but now I'm 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 pretty certain it's gonna look fantabulous. Fantastic!
Oh, you guys do it today. Hey, are you stay nice and dry in there? Hey. Guess what I got for you? I got you a ball. You want a ball? You gonna play ball? Here. Oh, get it. Uh oh, it's already in the mud. It's not food. You guys want food, didn't you? Bread, bread, corn. Get out of your food bowl. You want scratches? There you go. Have some scratches. There we go. Oh yeah. Just get your broom. Hey, where's your ball? Get your ball. Just put it back in the mud again. I mean, what do you think of the pigs? Hey, what do you think? What do you think of the pigs? Hey. Too close. Yeah. Well, the pigs are doing great. This is week. I think it's three, two. The week seems to be flying by. They seem to be enjoying it here. They got their little look at their. They're digging a hole over there. They haven't dug out underneath yet. They seem to be sticking to the middle. They got their little mud hole. They got their little like root. Their root. The rooting area over there. The food's staying nice and clean. And their slop dish. They just keep moving it around, which is okay because I just you know add some more slop every once in a while. They seem to be happy and entertained. So, anyways, there's the pigs. Doing great. Well, the sky's opened up, it's decided to rain. We're kind of finished the outside just in time. Now we can work on the inside. But it's good when you're using concrete and you want it to dry relatively slowly. If there's a lot of humidity and water in the concrete itself, it seems to harden the concrete process. I'm sure there's like a technical term for that sort of thing. But again, you don't want your concrete to dry too quickly. A lot of times they even recommend like soaking the concrete for days afterwards in order for it to harden to its fullest potential. This is our, our outside, it's nice and hard, it's drying up. It's going to dry to a more of a light gray than this, this dark gray. I don't mind the dark gray, but I believe it's going to dry to more of a light gray color. So we're working on the inside today. Quite fitting that it's raining, inside job. Don's mixing up some mortar, more mortar, more thin set. It's not thin set, it's mortar. Portland and sand, we're making it, we're making mortar. This is the kind of the same style of stuff you would uh, stick some bricks together on your house. So we've got our power pack, our Delta EcoFlow power pack. It's been our workhorse on this particular project. It's given us lighting in here because as we filled all the cracks in on the building, it's gotten dark in here because we don't can't see through the walls anymore. The, uh, the technique inside here is going to be similar to the outside, but we're not as critical for rain shedding. So we're going to try to make the, uh, the chinking more of a flat surface, even as opposed to a sloped on the outside. The, again, we sloped it on the outside in order to shed rain inside. Hopefully we're not going to have any rain in here. As you guys can see that you can see the mortar being pushed in from the outside in and you can see how it's locked on to the lath. And I think that's the key to have long lasting chinking. So the idea on the inside is to push it as far out as we can and it meets somewhere in the middle. I don't think it needs to get right to the outside. It'll probably help because it's almost like a double brick situation in an older style home. They leave a, leave a little bit of an air space between both courses of brick. So that's the kind of thing I think we're gonna do here is that there's gonna be a little air space in there and it's gonna allow a thermal break. So it's not gonna be like a, just a brick house. We've got to do four walls today in the same amount of time. So hopefully we've learned over the last, you know, couple of days on how to do it quickly because we've got a lot to do. Holy Hannah, we're, uh, I don't know, three coffees in. We've got our back wall done, our side wall done. We've got two walls left to go and we're running out of time. Running out of daylight and running out of energy. This is, uh, it's getting hot too. It's getting like, uh, it's like a sauna in here. It literally really is because it's gotten really, damp outside and I guess the humidity combined with the mortar and the adding the water and the chinking the logs. And it's the end of the day. I don't know if we're gonna get this done. We've got two more, two more and it turns out that the inside is just as big if not bigger cracks than the outside for whatever reason. A couple more in. How you doing Don? Don's been working on the cracks. The corners. Cracks and corners. Corner cracks. He's just kind of lobbing the mortar into the cracks. Yeah, I try to jam it in as far as I can. And he wiggles it around to make sure, <laughs> sure it's really tight in there. So yeah, it's like finger paint with mud. 
and I'm doing the more, the more, the more mortar. It looks fabulous though, fabulous. Hello? Come on in. Smooth out the big stick. Knock the big chunks off. I am knocking the big chunks off. Alright, so you smooth it. You use your stick. Smooth the big chunks off. So what's your technique, Lena, to, to smooth out the mortar joints? Well, um, um, I, I, I smooth it out with a clack with a stick. Mm-hmm. And, and I grab it like this. Yep. And then I paint it like this. Perfect, and it makes a nice smooth, smooth joint. And then I keep smooth, and then I smooth it out like this. That's a good job, buddy. Like something's underneath this one. Well, guys, there you go. It's easy as that. Just it's like child's play. It's like playing in the sand. So uh, Lena's got the technique down pat. She uses a stick and she uh, smooths out the mortar joints or the chinkings. Hello, guys. Hey, look at the baby birds. They're awake. Oh. Oh. They're waiting for some food. I think Mama, Mama Robin's in the tree somewhere, wait, waiting to give a big of a worm. Probably right? they're hunting. Probably yeah, they're, hun mama. they're hunting for worms. Yeah, they're gonna bring bring some food back for dinner. Yeah, but they're a little baby jet. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're this gonna head down. Pretty high. No, I know it's scary. That's why we hold on, right? Hold on, make Aww. it safe. While we wait for this chicken to dry, let's go check out another project that we worked on in the winter time. It's the tart cabin. The tarp cabin. We haven't visited that in a while and today's kind of got the high winds and I figured, you know what, let's go, let's go have a look and see how it fared. I know, I know there was a lot of doubters. There's the creek. Creek and the little, we gotta bring up the bridge at some point. That'll be interesting to build. Currently I use the, uh, the tree, the land bridge. This is, uh, I'll spare you guys the walk. It's a fair walk. Got deer tracks. Look at that. I wonder if there's a deer, deer bedding somewhere. Does anybody know what these things are called? In the midsummer, they have these little things that grow on them that if you touch them, they explode. I'm not sure what they're called. Holy grass, Batman. Look how tall this has gotten. It's nearly above my head. Take a look at that. The grass has grown significantly. I don't, I, like I said, I don't come back here very often, but holy, I gotta, gotta get the lawnmower out here or something. A big sickle or a scythe. Cut everything down. It's good because it's not wet. I wonder if it's tick season yet. You can kind of see what the wind does. Just kind of wind shear and it just knocks these balsam firs down. So I, those look like they've been down for a while. Well, there you have it. There's the uh, plastic wrap cabin. <laughs> There's ferns growing up through the floor. That's funny. Look at that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that's even better than I thought. Everything seems to be intact. Plastic still good shape. Oh, bed still relaxing as ever. It feels like rainforest like. This is cool. I like how the ferns are growing from the floor. <laughs> as you can see, we took the, uh, we took the fireplace out for safe keepings because we didn't want it to get wet and rust and whatnot. So we just bring it out when we need to. But uh, my brother Chris has been out here. He did, did a it was a turkey hunt out here. He built a blind next door. He stayed over here, out here overnight. People said it was gonna fail. Everybody, every, everybody's so negative when it comes to anything. Like, just go do it, try it, see if it works. You know, if you're gonna fail, fail quickly. You got some, got some plastic wrap and you got some logs. People were gonna say that these were gonna fall apart. Logs were gonna fall apart. It's all cedar, all waterproof. Six months, cabin in the woods, 25 bucks. Can't go wrong, I'd build it again. And maybe I will, or a different version of it. Who knows? Anyways, there's the plastic cabin. It's doing, uh, it's doing great. The property looks good. I don't see any firewood that fell out of the sky. This side of the property isn't very accessible, meaning, well, there's kind of like marshy area in between, and it's hard to get any kind of motorized vehicle up here, which is kind of sad because there's a lot of sugar maples out here. It like it, the whole forest is kind of lined with these giant maples that. Where I'm going with that is that you could tap them to make 
more delicious maple syrup. So I think this winter coming up, we're gonna try to make it a little bit more accessible out here in order to uh, in order to get our maple sap to the evaporator. Because now that we've have we have our sugar shack all done, or close to done, set up anyways, we could boil a lot more sap so we can make lots and lots and lots of maple syrup. We just got to get to the other side of the property in order to kind of truck it all back to the evaporator. Anyways, like I was saying, there's the tarp cabin. 